Okay, good morning. So, let us get started with today's class. Okay, so a quick recap of where we stopped us in the last class. We were uh, looking at uh, the simple carburetor and uh, this is a schematic of the same. So, we have uh, air taken from the atmosphere entering to the section uh, labeled as AA prime and uh, that flows through a venturi which is a restriction in the cross section and uh, the pressure drop uh, drops when the air flows through the venturi okay and the pressure drop is the maximum when uh, at the throat of the venturi right and there the air speed will be the highest okay. And what we have is that like we have something called as a fuel dispersing nozzle or a fuel discharge nozzle placed at the throat of the venturi and that is connected to this flow chamber which contains fuel right. The flow chamber ensures that the fuel level is maintained at almost a constant uh, uh, value and uh, essentially the as the air flows and the pressure drops there is a pressure difference which is created between the top surface of the fuel in the flow chamber and the pressure at the throat of the venturi and that essentially results in the flow of fuel through the fuel discharge nozzle if the pressure drop is significant enough. So, today we are going to derive some simple expressions to figure out first of all when will the flow happen and then what will be the flow rates of the mass and the fuel because the flow rate of the mass and the fuel is going to affect the uh, fuel air ratio right. So, that is something which we are going to analyze today and uh, as we discussed uh, the top surface of the fuel in the flow chamber is placed a little bit below the uh, tip of the fuel dispersing nozzle or the fuel discharge nozzle to ensure that there is no accidental leakage of fuel right when there is a pressure drop okay. So, we want to carefully regulate the amount of fuel you know like through the uh, fuel discharge nozzle. So, we will uh, today we will also figure out the role of the throttle valve and the choke valve as we uh, do the analysis and the term carburetor depression is uh, used to uh, refer to the difference in the pressure between the top surface of the fuel in the float chamber and the uh, tip of the uh, fuel discharge nozzle that is at the venturi throat ok. So, just a few quick uh, notations we define the section A prime as the section at the entry to the carburetor which we also label as section 1 ok and the throat is labeled as BB prime which is also referred to as section 2 and section 3 is the top surface of the uh, fuel ok in the float chamber. So, we will write down the corresponding uh, equations ok as we go along. So, before we begin our analysis let us uh, look at the uh, main components of the carburetor ok. Just a quick recap to clearly list what are all the main components. So, the main components include the float chamber where the uh, fuel is stored and then we have the venturi ok. Then we have the fuel discharge nozzle or the fuel dispersing nozzle. and then we have the throttle wall and the choke wall. So, please note that the section downstream of the throttle wall is connected to the intake manifold and then to the intake wall ok. So, and thereby to the cylinder ok. So, that is the uh, 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 downstream connection okay, from the uh, throttle wall. So, let us make a few uh, assumptions in our analysis. So, let me state all the assumptions that we are going to make. So, the first assumption is that we are going to assume the flow process to be steady and uniform. Please note that these are all approximations. Okay. So, the second one is that the inlet kinetic energy of air is neglected 
okay so that means that at section 1 when the air is taken from the atmosphere the speed of air is assumed to be small such that the kinetic energy is negligible okay so the next assumption is that heat and work interactions between the carburetor and its surroundings are neglected okay so this is another assumption the next one is that we we assume all the process is at, at least involving air to be isentropic okay and air is treated as an ideal gas okay so that like we can use the ideal gas equation of state pv equals mrt okay the next assumption is that like we will assume that the fuel is incompressible and uh, uh, when we want to analyze the motion of the fuel the <coughs> flow of fuel we will use the Bernoulli's equation, Bernoulli's equation makes use of other assumptions also right, Bernoulli's equation we write for flow along a streamline right, so we are going to make all those uh, assumptions and we will take constant specific heats for air, okay. So these are some assumptions which we are going to make in this analysis. Okay, so now let us go and apply the balance of energy or the conservation of energy for the flow of air okay. So, between the inlet section A A prime and the throat section B B prime. So, let us apply the balance of energy okay between these two sections. So, if I go up so this is my inlet section A A prime and then like we are going to look at what happens at B B prime okay which is the throat section okay. So, we are going to apply uh, the balance of energy under all these assumptions okay. So, this is where you know like as I mentioned as one of the uh, outcomes of this course right is to use what we learnt in basic first year uh, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, dynamics and so on right for the analysis of automotive systems. So, under all these assumptions we have already learnt that the balance of energy can be rewritten in this form. So, it is going to be Q minus W equals H2 minus H1 plus V2 squared minus V1 squared by 2 plus G times Z2 minus Z1 okay. So, this is the equation for the balance of energy. So, now here applying all the approximations that we are assumptions made we have neglected heat and work transfer. So, we will take all those both terms on the left hand side to be almost 0. So, and then we are neglecting the inlet kinetic energy of air okay and for the flow of air we will neglect the change in potential energy to be negligible okay. So, considering the flow of air right. So, these are some approximations that we are making. So, if we do this so the velocity speed of air at section 2 which is the throat we are going to get it as 2 square root of 2 times h1 minus h2. So, assuming constant specific heats I can uh, rewrite this as square root of 2 times Cp times T1 minus T2. So, here we assume constant specific heats okay. So, this, this is the simplification that we have okay. Now, recall that for an isentropic process so 
So, we are going to use the uh, isentropic uh, equation of state what do we have for an isentropic process we know P v power gamma equals constant ok. In ter if I want to write in terms of temperature, so what we are going to get is it like we are going to get T 2 by T 1 is going to be equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma ok. So, that is going to be the process relationship for the isentropic process relating pressure and temperature. So, if we make use of this, so the speed of air at section 2 can be rewritten as square root of 2 C p T 1 minus T 2. Let us take T 1 outside. So, we are going to get 1 minus T 2 by T 1 ok. So, we have just taken we have just written T 1 minus T 2 as T 1 times 1 minus T 2 by T 1 ok. So, now we substitute for T 2 by T 1 we are going to get 2 C p T 1 1 minus P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma right. So, this is what we get as the expression for the speed of air at the venturi throat. Now, the mass flow rate of air at the venturi throat is of course, this is obtained from applying the conservation of mass right. So, I am directly going to write down the uh, equation. So, it is going to be rho A 2 A 2 V 2. So, what is this what are these parameters? So, this is the density of air at the throat section ok. So, this is the uh, cross section area of the venturi throat ok through which the air flows ok. So, cross sectional area of the venturi throat through which the air is flowing ok and V 2 we have anyway evaluated above. So, what are we going to get rho A 2 I can rewrite as P 2 by R T 2 correct. So, this we are writing as P 2 by R T 2 right using the ideal gas equation of state. A 2 we will keep it as it is then we will essentially substitute for V 2 which will be C P T 1 times 1 minus P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, now we are just going to make a few algebraic uh, simplifications to get the final equation. So, what we are going to do is that we will write this equation as P 1 A 2 multiplied by P 2 by P 1 to begin with right. So, then we will get P 2 A 2 which was there in the numerator outside the square root right. So, I am writing P 2 as P 1 times P 2 by P 1 I can do that and then like R times T 2 we already know the process relationship right that is going to be P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma correct. So, I am substituting for T 2 then what can I do I can take square root of T 1 outside the square root ok the T 1 outside the square root then I will get square root of T 1. Then we are left with 2 C P 1 minus P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma right we are almost set now. So, if we simplify this we will see that we will get m dot a which is the mass flow rate of air through the uh, venturi is going to be equal to P 1 A 2 divided by R times square root of T 1 ok. So, that 
we get because there is a t1 in the denominator and square root of t1 in the numerator. So, we get square root of t1 in the denominator. Then if we simplify and take all the uh, factors involving p2 by p1 inside the square root, what we are going to get is the following. So, we will get 2 c p p2 by p1 2 power gamma minus p2 by p1 gamma plus 1 by gamma. Okay, so, this is what we will get. Okay, so, this is how this expression would be simplified. So, please note that we have made a quite a few assumptions in this analysis right and typically there are always going to be energy losses right. So, what we is typically done in fluid mechanics is that once we derive such ideal expressions we introduce what is called as a coefficient of discharge which lumps all the losses and discrepancies which are encountered due to the simplifying assumptions made in the <coughs> analysis process right. So, a coefficient of discharge is introduced to obtain m dot a as c d a. So, c d a is the coefficient of discharge for this flow of air okay, times p 1 a 2 divided by r square root of t 1 times square root of 2 c p multiplying p 2 by p 1 2 power gamma minus p 2 by p 1 gamma plus 1 by gamma. So, this is the equation for the mass flow rate of air. Okay. So, immediately one can observe that the mass flow rate of air through the venturi section depends on the ambient air condition right because it is dependent on P 1 and T 1 which is uh, which represent the ambient air temperature or the intake air pressure and temperature right. So, that is the first observation. The second observation is that like the mass flow of air obviously depends on the venturi throat area which is by and large fixed. Now, more importantly how can I regulate this mass flow of air by regulating P 2 because if you look at all the other parameters C D A S we have to calibrate based on experiments R is fixed okay. T 1 P 1 are fixed once you give me an ambient source right it they may slightly vary okay depending on the local ambient conditions okay. A 2 is fixed once we fix the carburetor design. So, the main uh, what to say uh, parameter or variable in this equation which can be changed with the engine operation to vary the mass flow of air is P 2 okay. and that is where the role of these valves come into play. Okay. Let us say the choke wall is completely open this throttle wall you know like can be rotated okay. When we apply the accelerator pedal we are essentially going to rotate this throttle wall. So, we are going to increase and decrease the opening downstream and please note that the throttle wall is connected to the intake manifold and thereby to the cylinder through the intake wall right. So, what is going to happen if I open the throttle wall by varying extents I am going to adjust P 2 right because let us say I open the throttle wall by a great extent what will happen? The pressure at point 2 will further drop down right because it is going to be connected to the cylinder and during the suction stroke right. So, the pressure at point 2 will drop. So, once P 2 drops we are going to have more 
mass flow rate of air into the cylinder right. So, then what will happen to the uh, fuel flow rate we are going to look at that now ok. So, we can immediately observe that adjusting the throttle wall will essentially ensure that we get a variable flow rate of air ok depending on the operating conditions ok. So, let us go back here ok. So, now let us apply the Bernoulli's equation for the flow of fuel. So, if we apply the Bernoulli's equation for the flow of fuel, please note that I, we are going to apply the Bernoulli's equation between the uh, throat section and the uh, top surface of the fuel in the float chamber ok. So, those are the two points between which we are going to apply the Bernoulli's equation. So, if we apply the Bernoulli's equation, what is going to happen? We will get P3 by rho f plus V3 f square. Let me put the subscript f to indicate that that is the speed of the fuel, right? By 2 plus Gz3 is going to be equal to P2 by rho f plus V2 f square by 2 plus G z 2 ok. Please note the subscript 2 indicates the section at the venturi throat, 3 indicates the uh, what to say top surface of the fuel in the float chamber ok. So, the, that is the uh, labeling that we are using and uh, the subscript f indicates fuel ok. So, once again we are going to make a few assumptions. The first assumption is that like in the float chamber or the top surface the uh, speeds are low. So, we neglect the kinetic energy of the fuel ok. So, that is something which we are going to neglect. So, if we do this and please note that P3 what can we say about P3 is almost going to be equal to P1 right because P3 is vented to the the top surface of the fuel is vented to the atmosphere in the float chamber right. So, P3 is going to be near atmospheric and that is going to be the pressure at the intake section to the carburetor also. So, P3 is approximately going to be equal to P1. So, if we make all these uh, approximations what we are going to get is the following. So, V2 f is going to be equal to square root of 2 times P3 minus P2 divided by rho f plus 2 g z 3 minus z 2 correct I am just rearranging the terms. Now, what is z 3 minus z 2? It is going to be minus h because z point 3 is below point 2 ok. So, z 3 minus z 2 is going to be minus h you remember that parameter h that we marked in the uh, schematic. So, this was h right it is the difference between the top surface of the fuel and the tip of the fuel discharge nozzle ok. So, that is going to be h. So, as a result this equation will simplify as 2 times square root of we are replacing P3 with P1 minus 2 g h ok. So, thus the mass flow rate of fuel is including a coefficient of discharge is going to be C d f. So, C d f is the coefficient of discharge for the fuel flow system ok. So, C d f uh, times uh, 
rho f which is the uh, density of the fuel times the area of the fuel discharge nozzle okay I can take A2 that is the throat of the uh, venturi right that the cross sectional area of the throat. So, now I need to take the area of the fuel discharge nozzle which we are calling as AFJ okay times V2F. So, if we get this we will get CDF times rho f times a f j multiplied by square root of 2 p 1 minus p 2 by rho f minus 2 v h ok. So, this is what we will get ok. So, this is the expression for the uh, mass flow rate of fuel ok. Please note that C d f is the coefficient of discharge for the fuel flow system ok. Rho f is the density of fuel. Okay, AFJ is the area of the uh, fuel discharge nozzle okay, at the tip. Okay, that is AFJ. Okay, so, these are the various parameters.